Hi, Seth David here with another webcast brought to you by Nerd Enterprises Incorporated. Today we're going to be talking about managing large lists in Microsoft Excel. But first, check out our high energy bookkeeping webinar that's coming up. If you're a bookkeeper or if you're doing the books, maybe you don't think of yourself as a bookkeeper, but maybe you're doing the bookkeeping. And for that matter, if you're looking to build a bookkeeping practice, this is the webinar for you. This is the webinar where we're going to show you as we've done, how to take a bookkeeping practice where you're just one person maybe, billing out some time and getting some clients and building into a full-fledged practice. We're going to show you how to do that. We're going to show you how we did that. Of course, we took it even further and built out the accounting side because we, like me, who actually know accounting and bookkeeping, and we were able to do that. So email me, Seth at NerdEnterprises.com. And I'll be more than happy to fill you in on the details. The uh, webinar is not scheduled yet. It's still being written. I'm still writing the content for it. But uh, as soon as it's ready and available, I can let you know. So if you're interested, email me at Seth at NerdEnterprises.com. Without further ado, we're going to bring you in. I'm going to enlarge my screen and show you a little bit of what I'm talking about here when I talk about managing large lists in Excel. Now, when you have a large list of data in Excel, you're going to need to know how to use some of the tools here in order to manage the list and, in particular, to find information quickly. Let me share my screen with you. Screen number two. That's where the spreadsheet is. Now, I was recently working uh, with, a, with a company, and uh, it was a client had a new accounting system. It was new, it was new to me. Uh, where the person who set up their chart of accounts set up an incredibly robust chart of accounts, which is what you're looking at here. Unlike QuickBooks, you can't simply choose from a drop-down uh, in this program. So I found myself spending an exorbitant amount of time scanning the account list in a separate module in order to find the accounts I needed to record the transactions because I was trying to get them caught up. Eventually, I said to myself, there's got to be a better way, and sure enough, there is. I exported the chart of accounts to Excel. And now I can filter it, sort it, even search for keywords in order to find the accounts I need. And you're going to see how I did that. And one of the most powerful things I'm going to demonstrate here is to show how, a, how you can show a list of the search results in Excel. And this gives me quick insight into where I can find the information I need where there are multiple results and time is critical. It's always critical, especially when you're billing the client by the hour. You don't want to spend too much of their money to pay you to find information like this to pay me to do more interesting and more expert type things. So I turn on my filters right away because that enables me to chisel this list down. I can grab this little groove here once I click the drop down from the filter and I can unselect everything by unchecking the select all box. And now I can say, all right, I just want my administrative expenses and over here we've got overhead expenses. Not sure what the difference is, but they've got it. That's what somebody set up for them. And we're going to go down here, and let's say I'm looking for supplies. I want, I want to book office supplies, and I can't find it. So actually scanning down here real quickly, I can see it here. But as we've seen, and as I happen to be aware, um, there's multiple uh, names for things in this chart of accounts that kind of represent the same thing. So before I just say, oh, I'm going to use that, I want to find all of them. So what I'm going to do, talk about that in a minute. Um, what I want to do is I want to search. So I search for anything that says supplies. And I can keep hitting enter, which is the find next option. And it'll show me one at a time. But more importantly, if I want to see all of the items that have the word supplies in it at once, I can choose find all. And notice what happens is Excel gives me a drop down here, or a list rather, which I can widen again. Now all these results are hyperlinked, so I can click here as computer supplies. And let's tag it by just putting an X in my tag column. And I'll go to office supplies. It takes me here. Let's go to small tools and supplies. It takes me here. And finally, another office supplies. So I've got two office supplies. Now what I can do, now that I've tagged those, is I can close this. And I can go to my tag filter, unselect everything, and I just want the X's. That's all I want. Click OK. Now I've got all my supplies related. I can see I've got these office supplies and overhead and these office supplies and administrator. I have no idea what the difference is. I don't even know if the person who set up this chart of accounts could tell me what the difference is. But it's there. So I need to either find a way to merge these in this GL package or just pick one and say I'm going to use that one. And then I untag the one that I don't want. 
delete that, drop this down and click OK, and it will eliminate the one that's no longer tagged. So that's the power of, the of setting up a tag column where I can tag things that I know I'm going to want to see frequently. Another one that I need a lot is labor. So I can type labor here. I can choose find all. And once again, I've got my list. Go to direct labor. It's already tagged off. I had already actually tagged a bunch of these before. So I've got all of these already tagged, as you can see. Except for this one. Tag that one. Close. And I can just uncheck the blanks so it only gives me the X's. Another way to get at it. And here they are. So this is powerful stuff in terms of being able to get this information down. And then when I'm actually working, entering transactions, I have it uh, filtered down to just my tag list because this way I'm able to show a much shorter list and it takes me a, a fraction of the time to figure out which account number I need to get the account in that I'm trying to do this for. So the other thing to do is let's take a look. Let me clear this out. Say I need all my repairs and maintenance based accounts. And that's the wrong thing there. I don't necessarily want to do it like this because there may be lots of variations on the name. I just want to show the whole entire list here and check everything. Let's go to the R's for repairs and maintenance. But on my way down, I notice in the M's I've got maintenance and repair. I've got repairs and maintenance. I've got maintenance and repair. So I check all these off. Click OK. Now I've got this list down, and I can tag them this way. And now I can clear this filter list out. Again, uncheck my blanks in the tagged. And now I can see all my repairs and maintenance accounts. So that's the power of this, is using the filters and marking things this way, I can very quickly chisel a large list down to just the things I need. This is just my own little anal thing. I like to have stuff nicely centered. So now I've got my list. These are the accounts I know I kind of need. I can also, of course, manually go through and tag things. So let's go back to my tab. Um, certainly I want to know what the account number is for my bank. And I can go through and I can manually tag things just the same way. So I want to go to, let's say I want to see all my liabilities. I want to see my loan accounts. Go to the major category here and select everything. I want long-term liabilities and current liabilities. I want to see where are my loans. So now very quickly I can tag any of these. See if I, if I have loans that I'm paying off, that's an account I might need to be using at least on a monthly basis. So I might want to tag that as a frequently used account. Now, once I've got these things tagged, then what I can do, and here's a, you know, like a mortgage these guys have and a small business loan. So now I can go back, clear this out, show my tagged stuff. And now, so this is kind of like the list of accounts that I'm using. And of course, I can change this at any time, but now that I have this, I have on another screen the GL, the actual GL package where I'm entering the transactions and I can quickly refer here and if I want what I can even do is I can take this list, I can highlight it, and I can use the select visible cells command which you can add in by customizing your quick access toolbar. I've already added it in. It's in the command options. It's called select visible cells which does just that. It selects only what's visible. I can copy this and I can go to a new sheet and paste it and now I've got a list of just those accounts, which is great. This is so powerful because it really helps me to just work with the information I need. I don't need all that extra stuff. And then when I'm caught up, when the time comes, I'm going to look into merging accounts and getting rid of the stuff that I don't really need. So that is how you can manage a large list of data and use the tools in Excel to get at the information you need very quickly and without wasting a whole lot of time. Time, of course, is the critical element especially when we're in the bookkeeping world or generally in the consulting world. Time is everything. Time is money. Time is on my side. I know how to use the right tools in order to save it. And that saves my clients money so I can focus on the more important stuff. And I can assure you that clients really appreciate that. So with that, I bid you another wonderful week. Look forward to a great webcast next week with Nerd Enterprises. Visit me on the web, nerdenterprises.com. Or email me, Seth, at nerdenterprises.com. See you on the web. <laughs>